All right, we've seen several types of equilibrium constant at this point, molecule-based or mole-based or pressure-based equilibrium constants. We can think of them all as products over reactants, but it's molecules of product or moles of product or pressures of the product raised to the stoichiometric coefficients, and likewise reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients, which are negative. We've also seen relationships for how to convert back and forth between the molecule-based and mole-based part. Um, equilibrium constant using some number of multiples of Avogadro's number, and back and forth between the molecule-based and the pressure-based equilibrium constant, converting molecules to moles, uh, molecules to pressures using uh, the ideal gas law, Kt over V. But there are other forms of the equilibrium constant that are also convenient to use sometimes. For example, if we're not working with a gas phase reaction where pressures are the most convenient unit to use to describe the relative amounts of the species. We might be working in solution. Lots of reactions happen in solution where we're more interested in the concentration of the reactants and the products. So it's nice to be able to talk about a concentration-based equilibrium constant, concentrations in molarities perhaps. If those concentrations are in molarities, and that's just uh, moles of each species divided by the volume of the solution. The volume is the same for each one of the species, so there's no reason for that to be inside the product. I can pull that out and call that 1 over V raised to each stoichiometric coefficient added up. That's the thing we call this delta nu, the change in the stoichiometric coefficients for the reaction. And then what's left over is a product of moles raised to the stoichiometric coefficients, but that's exactly the same as Kn. So uh, this is, I can rewrite this as 1 over V time raised to the delta nu times K little n. Of course, K little n is itself related to K big N. K little n is some factors of Avogadro's number times K big N. So if I just take uh, an extra Avogadro's number and insert it into this thing that I'm raising to the delta nu. I can write this as K big N times 1 over not just the volume, but Avogadro's number times the volume raised to the delta nu. So either way, I can think of Kc as being related to K little n or to K big N by these relationships. The other form of the equilibrium constant that's pretty common to use is the equilibrium constant written in terms of mole fractions. So that's another unit of concentration that might be convenient in a solution. Or we could also use mole fractions in the gas phase just as easily as we can use them in solution. So uh, mole fractions raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. Mole fractions are just moles of each species divided by the total number of moles. So as usual, I can leave the species-specific term inside the product, pull 1 over n total out. It's 1 over n total raised to each stoichiometric coefficient once for each species. So that ends up being 1 over n total raised to the delta nu. That's fine with one caveat. The number, total number of moles is likely going to be changing as the reaction proceeds. That's not a constant in the same way that Avogadro's number is a constant or that the volume and the temperature might be constant if we're doing the reaction at constant volume. So uh, we, we need to do something with this n total under some circumstances to uh, make sure it's actually, make sure we're, sure we're using something that's actually a constant. And um, I guess let me, let me go ahead and rewrite this one time and say that this is equal to, since product of moles raised to their stoichiometric coefficient, that's just my case of little n. I can write this as 1 over total moles to the delta nu times k little n. Or again, if I'd prefer to convert to k big n instead of k little n, just introduce a factor of 1 over Avogadro's number 
inside the parentheses, and I'll write, instead of writing 1 over Avogadro's number times number of moles, what that means, Avogadro's number times number of moles, that would be the number of molecules. So these expressions are correct as long as you remember that the total number of moles and the total number of molecules is changing as the uh, reaction proceeds. So what's often more convenient is to um, use, uh, convert this to a Kp. If I notice that Kn is related to Kp, I'll rewrite this equation and say Kn is equal to V over Kt to the delta nu Kp, where I've just moved this uh, conversion, the Kt over V, over to the other side. Now I can replace this Kn with that quantity, V over Kt, Kp. So I'll write 1 over n total to the delta nu. Kn now looks like V over Kt, itself raised to the delta nu, all times Kp. But notice what I've got here. If I combine these two terms in parentheses, the thing that I'm raising to the delta nu power is volume over NKT. So if we trust the ideal gas law, I can look at that as 1 over pressure to the delta nu times Kp. So this result, Kx, is equal to 1 over P to the delta nu times Kp. That's a procedure for converting a pressure-based equilibrium constant into a mole fraction-based equilibrium constant if we're dealing with gases. So that's a lot of equations, uh, a lot of things to remember or to organize to keep track of how to convert one type of equilibrium constant into another. So let me see if I can make things a little more organized by writing out a little diagram now of how we convert various of these equilibrium constants into one another. So let's start with our first one. If I, wanna, if I have a k big N and I want to convert it to a k little n, I just multiply by 1 over Avogadro's number to the delta V, or uh, so k big N to k little n. I can think of that as multiplying by Avogadro's number to the negative delta V. Or if I want to go in the opposite direction, I multiply by Av Avogadro's number to the positive delta V. Likewise, to get from, if I have a K little n and I want to get a Kc, I multiply by 1 over volume to the delta V. So in this direction, multiply by volume to the negative delta n, delta nu. In this direction, multiply by volume to the positive delta nu. If I have a K big N and I want to obtain Kc, I multiply by 1 over Na times V to the, big N, uh, to the delta nu. So in this direction, multiply by Avogadro's number times volume to the negative delta nu. In this direction, I multiply by Avogadro's number times volume to the positive delta nu. Next, we have Kp. So that's one we had obtained previously. If I have K big N and I want Kp, I multiply by Kt over V to the delta nu. In the other direction, I would multiply it by the reciprocal of that, V over Kt to the delta nu. And lastly, this final one we obtained, if I have a Kp to obtain Kx, I multiply by 1 over P to the delta nu, or pressure to the negative delta nu. In the opposite direction, I would multiply by pressure to the positive delta nu. So this diagram doesn't say anything that we hadn't already written in the board in terms of equations, but perhaps it's uh, an easier reference to look back on in your notes and decide if I have, let's say if I have a Kc and if I want to obtain a Kp, there's, here are the conversions I need to do uh, in order to make that conversion. So. Now we know how to convert various different flavors of equilibrium constant into one another. 
Uh, we do have a few more things to say about where those equilibrium constants come from, how we obtain the values for those equilibrium constants, and that's coming up soon.